Welcome to Night Hacking at the Ordev Conference. We're doing live streams all day, and you can watch the live streams at nighthacking.com or live in Malmo, Sweden, where I'm speaking with Richard Baer and Jasper Potts. So how are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Yeah, doing all right. You, you sound like you could be doing better, Jasper. Try talking <laughs> louder, and let's see if it comes through. OK, is that any better? Yeah, much better. OK. So what sort of stuff have you been doing at the conference here? Anything exciting? What have we been doing? <laughs> we were presenting yesterday. Um, yeah. We showed the uh, Java 1 keynote demo and uh, sort of explained all the technology behind it and uh, how it all works. And uh, we were having fun here last night, uh, sitting on the big cushions, hacking, listening to jazz music, eating some good food. Um, definitely liking the whole sort of vibe and chilled out attitude here. Yeah, no, this is a pretty nice, pretty nice conference and venue. So did you guys have any good food? I heard you guys had some good steak the other day. We did. We went down to the downtown area in Malmo, which actually was really nice down there. And we went and, and uh, we found some place that was really happening. And they had, some good, <laughs> they had some good food. Yeah, we did the usual tourist thing of keep walking past places that are empty until you find one that's full. And then hopefully <laughs> it'll be decent. Yeah, that's, that's a good trick. Michael and I were playing that game last night as well. So speaking of the automotive demo, why don't you explain to folks a little bit more about um, what it is, how it works, and the technology behind it. Sure. So um, we put together a demo for Java 1 Keynote this year. Uh, we'll be showing it uh, at DevOps next week as well. Um, so there's plenty more chances to see it. And I suspect it will be going to other conferences in Japan and other places as well. So plenty more chances to see it live. Um, but basically, the idea is a all the technology that will go together in a smart car. Um, so we have... Kind of, kind of like the car on your shirt there? Yes, this is uh, <laughs> the uh, Duke's own uh, you know, 1950s classic British sports car with modern technology. It's like, yeah, what more can you want? Nice. So um, we even did some 3D, um, 3D printed renditions of this for the for the display itself. Yeah, so on the front we had a 3D printed car with a K64 board with, which has accelerometer and gyro built in on a great big spring so you could uh, bash it around and uh, cause the car accidents and uh, create so some interesting data for us. You've got some of this gear in one of your bags. At least you've got some of the boards. Yes, it's all a bit buried. Oh, it's oh, over yonder. It's in a mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the K64 boards are pretty phenomenal because of how small they are. So, so it's a microcontroller as opposed to a microprocessor. So on the chip has all the memory that the system uses as well, both the RAM and the ROM. And it's very small. It's 256K of RAM total on the board. And about half of that gets used by the operating system. So you get 128K less. Essentially, left. yeah. Yeah, for yeah, your whole that, JVM that and me. your app and everything else. So Yeah, my first... Um, I don't know, real computer that I programmed on a kid was a Mac 128K enhanced. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Big time. I'm telling you, when we were working on this thing, I was thinking, you know, 640 is probably enough for anybody. There's a lot of room, 640K. 128 is pretty, pretty tight. Yeah, no, that, that was pretty tight. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was amazing. The, the, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I hadn't really been paying attention to the evolution of Java ME over time. And the latest versions of Java ME, they've added a lot of stuff. Like, you know, it's amazing, but there's now Java Util Collections on CLDC, whereas it used to always just be vector and hash table were the only options you had. Um, but as a consequence, there's also more classes. So the core Java ME set is now somewhere around 500 classes total, including all the implementation classes, not just the APIs. Um, so that 128K is hosting 500 different classes as well. It's a tremendous um, achievement. There's also some cool libraries like uh, DIO, which gives you access yeah. to all the low-level um, input. So uh, we were using that to connect up um, analog inputs from the pedals. So we actually um, hijacked some uh, um, musicians' keyboard pedals um, to use as the accelerator and brake. Um, and they just gave us an analog voltage um, based on their position, so we could take that into the analog to digital input on the K64 board and read off a value. Um, we're also using uh, GPIO output pins to control LED, uh, RGB LEDs, um, and a bunch of other sort of cool sort of sensors and inputs. 
Cool. So speaking of interesting T-shirts, you, you've got a nice Caspian yeah. T-shirt there. And I, I seem to remember from Java 1 that the automotive demo had some cool user interface aspects to it as well. Oh, that's right. There, um, there were two, two different touchscreen displays uh, that the guys built that were both showing um, the latest versions of JavaFX running on Embedded. So one was being driven by um, a, a, an Odroid U3, which is a Samsung chip on a board that's made by a company called Hard Kernel. And then the other one was the Boundary Devices Saber Light board that uh, is running the Freescale IMX6. So they, they're both, you know, sort of, um, I guess, tablet or mobile phone, smartphone class boards uh, running the JavaFX UI. They had 3D maps on them and, uh, all, you, know, you know, all kinds of cool little animations and stuff. All right. And I, I know the end result of demos is always cool, but getting there is sometimes a challenge. What was, what was your biggest challenge in the Java 1? The automotive demo this year, Jasper. Any yeah. fun anecdotes or stories in the in the building up of the demo, <laughs> <laughs> leading up it's to the big event? Um, <laughs> endlessly breaking 3D printers. Um, I think that was definitely a bit of a nightmare. Is the 3D printers are brilliant, um, and you know, just silly things like you know behind the scenes. On so you know we built these big boards on the ba uh, back of it is mounted all of these sort of electronics and sensors and screens and this sort of thing. So we had to create you know a hundred different custom brackets to mount all this stuff on. It's just you know the little details that you don't see. And so they were all 3D printing. And so we had our little 3D printer running 24/7 for about you know two weeks printing all these brackets off. Um, and uh, several times you know the head gets clogged and you. Uh, have to go and soak it overnight in nail varnish remover and you know all these unglorious things that uh, go on behind the scenes to make this happen really yeah so you you probably wouldn't recommend traveling around the world with a 3d printer in your baggage and trying to base your presentation on it that would probably be a there's bad only idea. one crazy person i know who would do something like that yeah <laughs> yeah I sitting think on my that, left here you know no nobody nobody can really appreciate the hard work that went into the wiring on the back of the thing unless you've seen it it's really beautiful oh, what they yeah, did in terms of yeah. how they they got all the wires going all the yeah, boards our colleague Gary Collins uh, sp spent uh, days doing all the wiring um just you know just the power management to all of these different boards um so we mm. we use um automotive fuse boxes and big transformers to power them all off one power socket and then um, have to run that power to all the different boards and make sure that you know all the polarities are right and uh... yeah in fact that was another good story that you guys had out of that was how uh, in the fuse box the fuses have like a little light on them to show if they're on or off but the problem is is that like what was it the voltages coming out of it was kind of unstable yeah it, it's quite funny so we you know we, we've got these fancy fuse boxes which are designed for cars which had uh, nice little leds to tell you when the light was blown we thought this is a brilliant feature but unfortunately, the fuse box was designed for 12 volts, and we were running five. And it turned to power the LED. It was leaking about three and a half, four volts across the pins, even when the fuse didn't exist, which was enough to actually power up all these boards in sort of a half-powered, sort of almost working but sort of problematic state. Um, and it caused us, you know, days of pain. Until yeah. We realized so I'm sure diagnosing that was a lot harder than fixing it. Yeah, fixing it was just a nice 10 minutes with the wire cutters, cutting off all the LEDs. <laughs> yeah, and diagnosing it's difficult because the system is just misbehaving. And you don't know, is it the board? Is it, is it the software on the board? Is it our software on the board? Is it our debugging system? What's yeah, and after on? two days, you probably forgot you even stuck the fuse box in there to begin with. Yeah, and it's just, you know, starting to... Uh, oh. You know, add electronics to the whole mix of you know software, embedded boards, and you know, the, you know the other thing is you know we're always doing demos showing the latest and greatest stuff that we have. So, you know, things like the K64 boards, we're running on a um, Java development kit that was built about a two to three days before the conference, um, and overall we had it about a week. So, you know, we literally had three or four days with a working version of the uh, kit. Yeah, so. I think there's a there's a word for that. Crazy. Conference, conference-driven no. development. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be quite good at doing stuff last minute each year. Yeah, it it will work by the day. Um, that's always the promise. And yeah, we were we, we were we were there backstage before the keynote. Yeah, hacking away hacking away that morning on the code and still fixing bugs and getting stuff out there. Um, but yeah, 
there's just so many different bits that go into it from like, you know, 3D modeling for all the design side of things through to printing all the pictures, you know, getting bits of wood, cutting it all out, you know, uh, filling my whole my garage full of sawdust and... Uh, yeah, no, your, your house keeps getting more and more impressive with your array of hardware and stuff that you have <laughs> yeah, collecting there. Yeah, slowly building stuff out and... Uh, you're pretty soon you're going to have your own machine shop in your... Well, in that, your house. That's the dream, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, so switching subjects, you guys are also going to be speaking at the DevOx conference next week. So what, what sort of exciting stuff do you have planned for that? Well, we've got the, the keynote demo at DevOx next week, and we'll be reprising the, uh, the automotive demo. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more time to show it than we did yeah, in Java 1. Yeah, and you're, are you going to drape it with a nice black... Uh, I don't Drape think so. Covering the fans. <laughs> I think we're just going to leave it out there. <laughs> yeah, Stephen's referring to our nice little um, embarrassing crash on stage at Java 1 where uh, one of the boards overheated due to being covered with a black cloth for two hours before. Yeah, no, that, but that's, that's how they know it's real <laughs> because it, it didn't work at the beginning and it did work at the end. Yep. That's any good yeah, demo. It was, hard, it was hard to figure out what was going on at the time, but immediately afterwards the guys were trawling through the logs and... and and the first set of logs that they looked through, everything was perfect. It, it was behaving the way it was supposed to behave. And so it was like, what happened? And then they went and looked in um, some operating system logs, and they found that the GPU had overheated. Yeah. And, and that was yeah. the end of it. Yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting, <laughs> these boards, because they don't just work or not work. There seems to be many states of half working, um, and it's not really clear. So in this case, they, you know, the CPU had just decided that it got over too hot, and it would just shut down the GPU on us. Um, and it seems like the drivers didn't know how to handle the fact that the GPU would disappear from under them and maybe come back. So they just went into some unknown state that we're writing graphics to a chip that's no longer powered up. Yeah, um, it's not functioning. And yeah, you just get these weird and wacky things happening that don't seem to make any sense. Cool. All right, so anything else you guys want to share with so the... Um, so we have another session this afternoon at uh, 2.20 here. Oh, on, yeah, that's uh, your JavaFX session. Today. So we're, do, yeah, we're doing yeah, uh, scene, builder. scene Builder and IoT. So we're looking at how to connect hardware up to um, the Raspberry Pi and then sending that data over the wire and then doing JavaFX UIs with Scene Builder to show all that data and live and interact and send back and control LEDs. Cool. So we're going into all the sort of, you know, the idea here is rather than something, you know, big and complex that we could never explain, like the keynote demo, but we're going to just do a simple example showing all the same principles, but in a sort of practical example yeah. way. Nice. Dead, dead simple example. Just go through the code. Mostly it's going to be trawling through code. We're not, we don't have very many slides at all. Uh, we have one right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we maybe we'll have two later maybe. if we're feeling really yeah, ambitious. We might have you know. two. Mostly it'll be just going through the code. And so we've been focusing on making sure the code is really you know, tight and readable so that people could look at it and get a good instant sense for how the system works. Cool. Because it really isn't that complicated when you break it down. But it could yeah. get messy. It, it's just like software engineering in general, right? And Richard decided to uh, re-architect half my demo for me last night yeah, at about, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, you know, I was sitting here with a beer, listening to the jazz. Um, re re <laughs> jazz in one ear and Richard in the other. Yeah. You've got to use dependency injection. <laughs> <laughs> I won. I saved myself from dependency injection, though. So um, I'll save all you guys from dependency injection oh, as well. Worry, it's still, it'll still make it at the talk. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we still have a few more hours for him to uh, <laughs> insist on dependency injection. Cool. So looking forward to your talk later today, and thanks you guys very much for the short interview yep. this morning. Cool. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Tim.